Hey you, what up? Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I'm Mariam and guess what? It's Faves X Fails time for the month of March. This is my roundup video in which I talk about all my favorite and not so favorite products in makeup and beauty and other miscellaneous categories. And rather than tell you why they have worked for me, I also show you on my face just so you could see it. So I can show you rather than tell you why I love it. This is your cheat sheet video. This is probably one of those videos that you should come back to at the end of the month month in case you're looking for purchases because I don't want you to be buying something before I try it for you, okay? Team Truth Style, as always, I'm here to save you some time and money. And I'm hoping that this is the reason why you're here anyway. So with that said, remember to subscribe if you aren't already. Hit that notification bell so you can see all of my Wednesday and Sunday videos. And now let's get into this Faves X Fails for the month of March. All right, so I'm gonna go down the list as always, starting with primer, which is the first thing that I like to apply to my face. But I'm wondering if I should actually mention a miscellaneous non-makeup item first. Maybe not, maybe I'll do that at the very end so that you have a reason to watch this entire video. See, got you. I am in a positive mood, even though today has already been a day. But anyway, I have a new favorite primer for the month. It is still not my most favorite primer, I still don't love it more than my Essence Tinted Primer, but this is a primer that works with my favorite foundation for the month. I am talking about Dominique Cosmetics Blur and Moisture Serum Primer. Now this is a primer that works beautifully, seamlessly with those gripping types of foundations that can't necessarily work with a putty primer like the Essence Tinted Primer. So this is what I like to use instead for those foundations. Oh, remember this from my drunk unboxing with Lee? So I like this one because it primes and moisturizes, but it's not heavy, it's very light. So it doesn't feel greasy, it doesn't feel like a cream on the skin. Feels like a serum, it is a serum, and it just gives you this nice little veil, a base, perfect for those gripping foundations like I said, and it's been working great for me. It's not super blurring, but it is a bit smoothing. It's not ultra mattifying, but it's just a bit mattifying, so I like that combo, especially for those foundations. So let me stop mentioning those foundations, let me actually show you and tell you what foundations I'm talking about. So this month, I am loving the Catrice True Skin Hydrating Foundation with Hyaluronic Acid. I did a separate review on this foundation. It wore so beautifully, especially with this primer. I don't love it as much with my Essence Tinted Primer because like I said, those two together are just a little bit tough. It's tough to blend this product out over the tinted primer. It's just like a little bit of a drag thing happening and so I don't really love it. But together with this, it's just a beautiful pairing. So today I'm gonna use this one because I love it. But I do have other favorite foundations for this month that I will mention. It's not like last month. Last month I had a ton of foundations that were not for me. This month is different, thank goodness. I have quite a number of options. So the shade that I wear is 046 Neutral Toffee. I find that their neutral shades lean a little bit more olive than their warm shades that tend to lean a little bit more orange. So the olive in this case just works better for me than the orange, which seems a pinch saturated. And by the way, for my foundation brush today, I'm using my IT Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe Complexion Perfection. This is probably my number one favorite foundation brush. I recommend it, it's dual-ended. You could also use it for smaller areas like around the nose or for your concealer. I use it pretty much all the time. And for my primer, I use the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Complexion Brush, which is also a foundation brush, but it's so tiny for my giant face that I find that it's just a little better suited for primer since I'm not applying it all over my face, but solely concentrating it on the center. I'm talking a lot, I need to shut up. Oh man, but that glide. That glide is effortless over that primer. It's so smooth and so seamless. Man, I am in love. Very full coverage, covers everything. Makes my skin look very dewy, but never cakey. If you are new to my channel, I am an oily skin type, oily and acne prone, so I suffer from enlarged pores, from acne scars, from dark spots, hyperpigmentation, but my skin is on the good side right now. Usually my skin is the best in the summertime and the worst in the wintertime, so the colder it is, the worse my skin is, possibly because genetically, probably wasn't meant to live in this 
frigid New York climate. My skin also doesn't really thrive in humidity. In fact, that dry California weather is what my skin prefers. That's where it thrives. That's what it acts a little bit more normal rather than oily and acne prone. Before 2020, back when I used to travel to LA all the time, what seemed like once a month, sometimes twice a month, I remember instances where I would get ready to fly to LA for a shoot, let's say. It was in the middle of winter and my skin was just purging. It was angry, it had all these like cystic bumps all over my jaw and at first of course I'd be sad because I'd be anticipating this photo shoot where I'd have to look my best or maybe it was some kind of an event but then I always had this thought in the back of my head. I knew that once I land in LA, from the moment that I would step outside of the plane, all of those bumps would just physically begin to dry up. It was like magic and it never failed me. Which is another reason why I kind of permanently wanted to move there before 2020 happened. Between us guys, we were looking at houses and then 2020 came and now everything's on hold. The skin is so good with this foundation. I am obsessed, obsessed, obsessed. I am also loving the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream that I bought in Target earlier this month. I did a little Team Truth style review on my TikTok, just a quick little video. I was really impressed with the coverage of this product. I loved how inexpensive it was, how accessible it is. There's not too many shades, I will say, and the shade that I got is a little lighter than what I probably should have gotten, but anyway, I'm able to make it work. It's so full coverage, it's beautiful, I love it. Another Another fave this month is this NARS Pure Radiant Tinted Moisturizer with SPF 30. This one is totally different from the other two. It's not full coverage, in fact, it's sheer coverage, but it's great for those no makeup makeup type of days. I really like it. The undertones are really beautiful, very fitting for me, or at least the shades that I've been using. I can use actually three shades in this product because of the undertone. And now some people are saying that this is not a new product, but what is new about it is that they've added some new undertones and shades. So this is why I'm bringing it up. Love all three of those. If you're oily, acne prone like me, you may like them too. Do I have any foundation fails this month? Do I have any primer fails? No, I don't. It was a good month for primers and foundations in my book. Onto concealer. I seem to be missing the concealer that I actually wanted to talk to you guys about this time. Well, it's Pure's 4-in-1 concealer that I have been using a lot lately and I haven't featured it in a video just yet. I've only been using it off camera, but I really like it and I wanted to talk about it, but unfortunately, I don't know where it went. So I'm gonna have to use my second favorite concealer for the month, which is the Tarte Ultra Creamy Shape Tape. I did try it out in a video. I do have a comparison of this ultra creamy shape tape to the original formula. I like them both. I didn't really see a difference, though I know that some people with drier skin said that the ultra creamy is a game changer for them. It's way better. The shade that I'm using is 35N Medium, which isn't necessarily too brightening on me. It's more like skin matching. This is the shade that I like to use in the summertime for brightening when I'm a little bit more sun-kissed, but for the sake of today's video, it will work. It's the same price, $28 as the original shape tape, except it has some skincare loving ingredients. And ultimately, I've been liking it. Where's my concealer brush? Is it in the same place as my pure concealer? No, apparently not. I don't know why, but lately I've been leaning towards brushes when blending out my concealer instead of a sponge. I don't know, I kind of just like the ease of using brushes and not getting my fingertips dirty. Like I said in that review, I'm gonna be using them both. I'm gonna use the original and once I run out, I'll use the ultra creamy. But because my under eye is somewhat flat. I don't really have too much textured skin here, like not too many lines or folds. I feel like I could totally get away with wearing something that is on the drier side. I'm gonna set my under eye with my LC Cosmetics powder, the translu translucent one. It's just something that I started reaching for lately, but I did recently get my hands on the Tatcha powder that a lot of people wanna see reviewed. And so I think I will definitely try it out in my next testing new makeup video. So be on the lookout for that. It is literally right here in my cart at the very top at like the number one slot, meaning that it's the next product that I need to test out. For you guys so it's coming and thank you for your patience all right just setting everything as i do just a little set just a little brighten just a little blur boom boom nothing too crazy let's set my top lids real quick for the rest of the face again nothing new and unusual just my charlotte tilbury you've seen me use this before it's something that i love i mean you can tell i love it but i do have one size over there in the corner of the room it's looking at me and i definitely want to test it out because patrick is the person who recommended that I tried 
the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. He was right, I fell in love with it. And now that he has created his own powder for one size, I'm wondering what his inspo was. He loves something blurring. So that's another product that I have lined up to test out. What is wrong with me? I'm like a little jittery. I had two cups of coffee, but my hands are like, Ur! not as steady as they usually are. I haven't got that surgeon hands precision today. No, no. I'll tell you, today's Monday. Before I even got to filming this video, I literally went through a mini panic attack, as it often so happens on Mondays. Without getting too personal, I realized that I sent out something personal to someone and it got lost in the mail. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> It'll be all right. I have hope. You guys, I have not mentioned a single fail just yet. I'm trying not to get, you know, too negative too soon in the video. I feel like, let me just balance everything out in my Libra way as I always do. But I am coming close to my first fail, which is sadly the House Labs eyebrow pencils. Womp, womp. Guys, I didn't love these. They were just kind of boring, kind of lame, uninnovative. There was nothing new or different about them. Sure, there was a good a range of shades, I like the fact that they even had like a black shade for black eyebrows like mine, but it wasn't anything I hadn't seen before. It was just like the ABH Brow Wiz or the Benefit Precisely My Brow. Moreover, Huda Beauty came out with her super precise Bomb Brows pencil just last month. And that one is the pencil that I reach for when it comes to my brows as of late. I'm not really like a brow pencil girl lately. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you've probably picked up on that in my last few videos. But this just didn't impress me. It was okay, but I'm expecting better. I'm expecting more from House Labs. I'm expecting something just a little bit more unique. You know, it's Lady Gaga. I'm gonna close up my little pouch. I'm gonna put this away and I'm gonna whip out my NYX trusty brow tint pen. I already applied my NYX brow glue to my brows. So now all I have to do is just add some little strokes just like that. Nothing too much. Nothing too exaggerated. Just adding in the brow hairs wherever I need them. You've seen me do this before, so I'm not gonna make a whole big spiel about it. And yes, I said spiel. I'm a New Yorker. Sometimes I'm able to be so precise with this brow pen that it makes it look like I microbladed my brows. Not all the time, I wanna be that precise, but on occasion I go for that microbladed look. And then people on IG stories always ask me, did you get your brows microbladed? And I kinda love hearing that. Eyeshadow time, shall we? There were quite a few fails this month, or rather not fails, but just like palettes that I didn't even keep because they just didn't keep me excited. So the first one being the Bare Minerals Gen Nude palette from one of my testing the latest makeup releases videos. I tried it. It was a, um, a yawn, it was a snooze fest. It was just like really, really boring. Plus I had some fallout and it just like muddied up my look. I wasn't feeling just the way that the color compilation was set up. It was okay, but not good enough for me to reach back for. So I didn't even keep it for this video because I didn't even care to show it to you. Moving right along. Another product in the eyeshadow palette category that I did not keep simply because it wasn't good enough was the ColourPop Make It Black Collection eyeshadow palette and the Super Shock Shadows. I'm actually surprised because the Super Shock Shadows from ColourPop are usually really great. It's a product that I never really shit on because it always works, but in this case, it wasn't that awesome. It was kind of just sheer, wasn't very pigmented, didn't really blend out all that well. Granted, I was able to create a pretty good look using those two products, the palette and the Super Shock Shadows, but, but first of all, with the campaign using black imagery and just like black packaging, I was expecting to see shades of black, like a glitter, a matte, a metallic, something, something to make it resonate. But the vibrant pinks and the reddish raspberry colors and the browns, they just were not resonating with the messaging. I didn't get it and Overall, it just wasn't great quality. It was okay at best. So I didn't keep them because I didn't care for them. However, the lippies, the lippy sticks from that ColourPop collection were gorgeous. But those two aren't even like my main fail in the eyeshadow category for the month. The main fail is so bad that I literally was bleeping left and right in the video when I was reviewing this product. I am talking about the gimmicky AF, Milk Makeup Color Chalk 
eyeshadow. This piece of shit is literally that, in my opinion. It's so poorly pigmented. It's so gimmicky. It's so juvenile. The packaging is corny. I didn't like any of it. And I was expecting a lot because this is a viral product that I've seen on TikTok. This is something that I've seen people talk about. But again, I feel like Milk Makeup is one of those brands that I just don't get. Maybe I'm not their demo, but this color chalk that had very little payoff, like barely their type of pigment for the hype, it was disrespectful. It was disrespectful to me as a makeup consumer and it was disrespectful to me as a makeup reviewer. Like, come on, like this just did not hit any mark at all. It was terrible, I hated it. And I'm sorry if I'm being harsh, it's just how I feel. And this just ain't it, this is just mm, not it. Not everything from Milk Makeup I don't like. I actually quite enjoyed their lippies from the same collection. So their electric glossy lip plumpers were so cool. They actually gave my lips like a buzzing kind of feeling and definitely plumped them and the colors are really nice. I've been wearing the shade Buzzed. No, ironically, the name of it is Buzzed. I've been wearing this one nonstop ever since I tried it. It's really good, really pretty. So I do like that. Congrats, Milk. Let's talk about some eyeshadow palettes that I love this month. In my previous video, you guys may remember that I did review the Natasha Denona Circo Loco palette and I gave it a very high score. I thought it was brilliantly pigmented. It was really easy to use, artist friendly, and I loved it. The only thing is with this palette is that I can't exactly include it in this faves category this month because I only used it once. I only used it once. So technically that was like my first impression of the palette. And yeah, the look that I created with it was very artistic. It required a lot of skill, but I haven't gotten a chance to really use it for every day with just like one shadow. So I can't say that it's my most used because I literally only used it one time. Now, the eyeshadow palette that I have been using the most this month, now this is a palette that I have been consistently reaching for almost every single time that I put on makeup. It has been the Ethereal Bloom by Artist Couture. First of all, I love the sleek packaging. It's so small and it's so compact. It just reminds me of spring. It's so on trend and it's so on brand for Artist Couture. I love all of these shades. This lavender is absolutely stunning. So is this peach, so are the shimmery shades. There's also a neutral in here, so you really can't go wrong. I feel like this is just the perfect springy combination. So today I'm going to be using this palette and show you kind of like what I've been doing with it. I'm gonna use my Fenty Beauty Primer for my lids real quick. You already saw that I set my lids with powder. So I'm not gonna do anything too crazy here. Just like a little bit of glue to keep my lids sealed. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reach for Flourish. It's just a peachy shade. I'm gonna add that kind of like to my crease, but a little bit lower than my crease, more like in the fold. So to the literal crease. You see how pretty the shade is? It's just like that gorgeous, slightly neon pastel peach that anyone can wear, whether you are fair or deep toned. This isn't one of those pastels that's gonna look like chalk. I just added it as a wash of color to my fold and then I kept this center space blank. I do wanna add another color. The brush that I'm using is Lunar Beauty LBE2 brush. Isn't that just fresh? Just fresh and happy and juicy, baby. I'm gonna let that be. I'm gonna take a big fluffy brush. What is this? Another Lunar Beauty LBE1 brush. Just blur that out some more. Pull that out, pull blur, just like that. Oh, so good. And then for the center, Dominique Cosmetics. I'm gonna take this poppy shade. It's basically a shimmery version of the Flourish shade. I'm gonna add that to the lid, just for a little flirty iridescence. And then a little bit on the finger, just so I could really stamp it, but only to the center. And now I remind myself of a Jolly Rancher. Now, if you want, you could take the remaining coral shade and just add that to the lower lash line, or at least like to the outer portion of the lower lash line, like that. Cue an ugly face. Simple, and voila, you're done. Love this palette, highly recommended for spring. Also, can definitely transition into the summer months. Got a gorgeous fuchsia shade over here that I will be utilizing. Love that one a lot. Shall we talk about some mascaras? You already know, I love my Wet n Wild Big Papa Mascara. This isn't a waterproof formula, but it's not smudgy and it works 
on my eyes, on my eye shape, on my short lashes. It makes them really big. I even have a how to maximize your own natural lashes or how to work straight, short Asian lashes using this mascara as well as a K-Beauty mascara, my Maison Collagen Curling Fix mascara that I love so much. So I have that video if you wanna check it out. Still a fave, haven't found a new replacement fave. In the fails category, however, I did try the Ilia mascara that a lot of you guys recommended. This one is called their Limitless, La Limitless, Limitless Lash Mascara. It has a really crazy, funky looking wand with tons of different bristles, some long bristles, some short bristles, some crisscross bristles, basically everything you can imagine in a wand. It's even curved on one side and straight on the other side, but to me, the whole thing is a gimmick because it doesn't really work on someone like me who has very short, very straight lashes. Although it's probably a mascara that would work just fine on longer lashes, for me, I need something simple. I'm gonna use a lash curler that I just have handy. It's not the one that is my favorite one. This is just the one that I have to use today. And I really should just get rid of the ones that aren't as great as the one that I love. I'm talking about my Laura Mercier one. I can make these work, but it's not as good. I can't get into the eye as precisely as I would like and I can't curl all the lashes. But anyway, I'm gonna use my Wet n Wild Big Pop Mascara. I didn't curl the bottom lashes, so it's not gonna have the same effect as when I do curl them. I just can't do it with this other curler. All right, I'm not gonna build up the lashes too much today. I'm kinda just going for a very casual look. This is good enough. What's missing on my face? What's missing on my face? Ah, yes. Bronzer, blush, and highlighter. This month, I am absolutely loving Jaclyn Cosmetics Blush and Bronzer Duo. The shades that I've been using and reaching for the most are Stay Rosy and Yummy Toffee, which is this gorgeous, rosy, neutral blush, and just like a nice medium olive bronzer. I think this bronzer is probably my favorite for my skin tone. It just looks very natural. It gives a nice little glow. It's not too muddy. It's not too orange. It's just right. It's exactly what I look for in a bronzer It's not super duper pigmented Which means that you could easily build it up if you want more of a tan look or you could just use it to give yourself a little Sunkissed glow or a chiseled glow. I love it a lot and I have been reaching for it non-stop Which is why it's in my faves category this month. It's just so good now the stay rosy blush is equally Awesome. Not super duper pigmented, but pigmented enough where you can build it up or just keep as a sheer wash of color for that believable flush. So I am a fan. It's been working for me. It looks so pretty. The packaging, I will say, is very bulky. It's heavy. And so I kind of keep it stacked on top of one of my drawers here in a tray. Otherwise, they're really hard to find a place for. They don't really fit in those um, Ikea Alex drawers. This is just like a little too big. So that's like my only criticism of the product. Other than that, I love it. I'm also a fan of Jaclyn's Sparks highlighter. Sparks is the second lightest, but golden undertone highlighter, and it is absolutely gorgeous. It's so good. This is the one that I've been reaching for nonstop this month, ever since it came out. I mean, look at the gorgeous glow. It's just ethereal, exactly what you want. You can build it up to be very blinding, or you can add just a little bit of it with a light touch for a healthy little also, I find that it's micro fine. It doesn't emphasize any pores or any texture. It's just good. It's good. This is what I look for. Don't have any failed blushes or bronzers for the month. Everything that I've tried has been okay, but these have been my favorites and my go-tos, which is why I'm mentioning them. I don't want to just talk about a bronzer from a brand that I've tried that worked for me, but I wasn't so overly impressed with it that I reached for it again. But in the end, it did still work. So specifically in this case, I'm talking about the Lip Bar Bronzer. It was a nice bronzer, but not enough for me to continue wanting to reach for it. It wasn't exactly a fail, but it was not a fave the way that this was a fave. I hope that makes sense. For the lips, I did quite enjoy the Jaclyn Cosmetics lip liners and liquid lipsticks. However, obviously, duh, not every single color looked great on me because not every single one was formulated or mixed for my skin tone or for my undertone rather. So there was tons of shades that I absolutely will never reach for that I will not wear. Specifically, I didn't love the shade Mama. It was just a little too cool for my liking, but not cool in a way that it looked good on me. This was cool in the way that dated me. It was cool in the way that 
it aged my makeup. So this is not a shade that I'm going to reach for. Although after watching other reviews, I did see that it looked great on some people who were very different looking from me. Let's just put it this way. So this is one of those, do you have a shade for you type of situations, you know? Also there were tons of shades that were just simply too fair, too pale, too light, like the shade Nudie. I mean, this looked like lighter than my concealer that I normally use. I mean, that's obvious, right? So yeah, there were some hits and there were some misses in there, but ultimately I really like the formula. So for today's video, I am going to use a Jaclyn Cosmetics lip liner. Again, I liked most of them, not all of them. Some were shimmery finishes that I absolutely do not like, but I guess some people do. I'm gonna go for the shade Cupcake, which is kind of on the pinky side. It's just a, a pinch pinker than my natural lip color. So I've been reaching for it a lot for that no makeup makeup type of look. It's not so obvious, you know? Really love that one. And you know what? Since I talk so much smack about that Milk Makeup eyeshadow chalk, I am gonna use a Milk Makeup product that I do like, which is their Electric Glossy Lip Plumper. I'm gonna use the shade, which I believe is a clear, just a clear, a nice clear jelly. There it goes. Well, I'm actually gonna spread that across with a concealer brush. Now that is the look. So now the reason why I like these lip plumpers is because I feel them working. It actually feels like something on my lips, some kind of a plumping from within. It's definitely activating some nerve glands or something. So it for sure arouses your lips in some stinging kind of way that I like personally. If you've never tried lip plumpers, this may be a bit too much for you. It may be just like an unusual sensation. It's definitely different from the Too Faced Lip Injection Extremes, which do work a little bit better in terms of physical appearance of your lips, but the stinging is not as intense, or maybe at least I'm used to that stinging more than this one. This one feels different, and I gotta say, I kinda like the sensation. I feel like it works. So for that reason, this product is on my faves list this month. All right, you guys, that is pretty much everything for the makeup. I have one more fave to talk to you about, and it is actually outside of the makeup category. It's not even really beauty related, although some people could say that it is. I am talking about this very expensive Hypervolt professional grade massager. So now this is a massager to help relax your muscles or prep them before working out. And it's something that I have been researching for a while. This was actually sent to me in PR by NARS. They recently did a collaboration with a celebrity trainer. And so Lee and I had a Zoom session with him and he taught us kind of how to use this. So this was like part of the package for their collab. But the reason why I'm even bringing this product up, mind you, it is very expensive and I typically wouldn't recommend something that costs a minimum of $250, but this can run up to as much as $400 considering all the accessories that come with it and just like the different model types. But the reason why I like it is because I actually think it works and I think it makes a difference. So hear me out. If you don't follow me on other channels outside of YouTube, if you don't follow my Instagram or my TikTok, you probably don't know that I am someone who has to work out in order to maintain the shape that I'm in. Working out is not something that I love. It's something that I learn to get used to just because I wanna be healthy and I wanna look good for my age, especially as I get older. So it's something that I do, it's part of my regimen, it's part of who I am. My body type, however, isn't <laughs> the typical body type that responds to workouts very quickly. I think I have more fat than I do muscle. And although I'm petite, I am very, very curvy. So I have a lot of like stagnant fat in certain areas, like below my buttocks and my hips, also like my upper arms, the back of the arms. So those are areas that I find to be really difficult in my case for me to work out. It's just something that I've always struggled with. So, but this product actually made a difference. And let me just explain to you my experience. So typically when working out those very stagnant fat areas, especially those areas with lots of cellulite. For me, that's my upper thighs. I typically am never able to feel that burn after a workout in those areas. It just never happens. I don't even know how to isolate those muscles. I don't really know how to make them work. No matter how many leg raises, no matter how heavy the bands are that I use, I am never sore the next day. Except I was finally sore for the first time probably in my life after activating my muscles with this Hypervolt product before actually working out. So I noticed a difference specifically in those areas of the stagnant 
fat or I have my cellulite. I massage those areas prior to the workout to kind of like pump them up, I guess, to get them ready for the workout. And then I did my heavy bands for my legs. I just did my regular like lunges and my regular side lifts. The next day I felt a burn. I felt sore for the first time probably in my life. And it was a very, very foreign feeling to me. So the only thing I can accredit that to is this product that although is very, very expensive, it's a product that I think has worked for me, you guys. So if you are someone who is looking for a little help in those areas, definitely check it out. Basically, it's made a difference in my life. It's a fave for me this month. It's something that changed my life. It made it just a little bit better. So I wanted to share that with you. All right, and with that said, I am going to wrap up this video. I'm going to model this very fresh and ethereal springtime makeup look for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about all of my faves this month, as well as my fails and I will definitely see you in my next video. I'm going to zoom on out so that you can check out my next couple of videos, a video that you may like and also my most recent video. Click on them because you probably ain't got nothing better else to do. Mwah.